What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today's video brings me to Palm Springs, California. I'm going to show you guys the house and grave of the icon and legend Frank Sinatra. like to be remembered hmm. well I think uh, I would like to be remembered as a man who brought a um, an innovation to popular singing a peculiar unique fashion that I wish one of these days somebody would learn to do so it doesn't die where it is uh, I would like to be remembered as a man who had uh, a wonderful time living his life and who had uh, um, good friends, fine family. And I don't, I don't think I could ask for anything more than that, actually. Frank Sinatra pretty much put Palm Springs on the map. Here is the front gate entrance to Sinatra's estate. See right here, Sinatra's residence, completed in 1947 by architect E. Stewart Williams. Here's a better view at the home. And this property has been listed in the National Register of Historic Places. So it all started when Frank's good friend, Jimmy Van Hoosen, stopped here for fuel while flying to LA. He told him that this place was beautiful. Palm Springs was beautiful. And Frank Sinatra insisted that they'd fly here to check it out. On May 1st, 1947, Frank walked into the office of E. Stuart Williams and he told him that he wanted him to build him a home, a weekend home here in Palm Springs. Frank actually wanted a Georgian style home. Frank was feeling pretty good about his career. He just signed a film contract with MGM and he just made his first million dollars. With Frank wanting a Georgian style home, the architect drew him two homes to check out. One being a Georgian style and the other being a modern style single story home. And Frank opted for that modern style. Frank wanted the house to be ready by Christmas time. He wanted to host a party, show off his flashy new house right here in Palm Springs. When the house was finished, it cost about $150,000 to build, which is pretty cheap, but you know, that was back in the day. Frank Sinatra lived in this house from 1947 to 1954, and he sold it in 1957. Before he sold the home though, he rented it out to Moss Hart and Judy Garland so they could rewrite the film A Star Is Born. Yeah, Frank, he was a movie star too. His first lead role was in Higher and Higher and Step Lively, both of them in 1944. And in 1950, Frank got his own show, The Frank Sinatra Show, which only lasts two seasons. A few miles away from Frank Sinatra's estate, is Desert Memorial Park and this is the cemetery that Frank Sinatra is laid to rest. This is a really nice small and quiet cemetery. Pretty peaceful here. By the way it's pretty hot out. I did not dress the occasion. I'm wearing jeans. Uh, it feels like 110 degrees but it's about 100. Frank Sinatra's grave is pretty easy to find. There's an entrance right there, and he's laid to rest right here. There is the grave of Francis Albert Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, everybody. Right here on his headstone, it says, Sleep Warm, Papa. 
Frank was born an only child on December 12th, 1915. He is probably one of the most best-selling music artists of all time, selling about 150 million records worldwide. Frank was part of the famous Rat Pack group. Frank found interest in music at a young age, specifically jazz music. When Frank was 15 years old, his uncle gave him a ukulele and he played that ukulele at all the family parties. He began singing professionally when he was a teenager and he learned music by ear and he never read music. In 1935, Frank got his first break when his mom convinced a local singing band to let him join. That band's name was the Three Flashes. One of the band members said that Frank hung around them like they were gods and they admitted that they only let him in because he had a car. When Frank joined that band, they had an audition and they won. They ended up getting $12.50 for it and they actually won a six month contract to perform and be played on the radio. After that, Frank became the band's lead singer and the girls loved him. After Frank's time in the band, he got a job as a singing waiter at a roadhouse called the Rustic Cabin. That was in the year 1938. He only earned $15 a week from that. Wow. That roadhouse that Frank worked at as a singing waiter, it was connected to a radio station in New York City and he began singing with a group. Frank felt that this was his big shot at success. Yeah, even though Frank wasn't getting paid that well, he felt that this was the break he was looking for. He even told his friends that he was going to become so big that no one can ever touch him. In 1939, a saxophone player by the name of Frank Main, who knew Frank Sinatra, they played a live broadcast together. He got Frank to audition and record Our Love, which was Frank's first solo studio song. Also in 1939, Frank joined the Tommy Dorsey's band as lead singer, earning only $125 a week. He made his first public appearance with Tommy Dorsey's band on January 12th, 1940. Tommy did become a father figure to Frank, and Frank tried to be as much like him as he can. His manners, perfectionist, Tommy was a big influence on Frank in his career. Tommy even becoming the godfather of Frank's child in 1940. In 1942, Frank left the band to go solo because he wanted to compete with Bing Crosby. Frank signed with Columbia Records in 1943. All while the musician strike was going on, Frank got in. Frank, having a big heart, donated a lot of his earnings to charity, which is a really good thing to do. Frank sang one last time in front of a live crowd on February 25th, 1995. That was at the Palm Desert Marriott with about 1,200 people in attendance. Frank had a couple of nicknames, one of them being Old Blue Eyes because of his deep blue eyes. Another, when he was in Tommy Dorsey's band, he got the nickname Lady Macbeth because of how often he changed his outfits and how frequently he showered. He was a clean guy, clean cut guy. It was the day May 14th, 1998, when Frank suffered a heart attack. He was taken to Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. He sadly passed away with his family at his side. Not to mention Frank's wife, Barbara Sinatra, who passed away in 2017, is buried right next to him. Beloved wife, mother, and grandmother. A voice for children. Frank was buried in a blue suit, looking classy as always. All right, everyone, that is the legend, Frank Sinatra, the one and only. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, share. I'll see you guys in the next video.